rotor and it's the starter clutch. Yep. So we took the uh, we took an impact driver and knocked out the three screws on the uh, clutch or starter clutch and I've cleaned it up and then put Loctite, blue Loctite and reassembling it. Put some oil in the inside of the sprocket and it's keyed and that key goes into this uh, generator we said it's the the rotor rotor and there's the key you can see so that key mm -hmm. has to go into there so we found it's easier to put this on first okay. key lined up Right be on. I think I'm on. Yeah. All right. I'll just go ahead and throw the bolt uh, in the center there, and we'll get that torque to spec here. Uh, the the big the main bolt for the. Okay. Main okay bolt. Yeah. Put that in there, and we'll go ahead and then we'll get that torque to spec here in a minute. Motor inside the housing here. Yeah, we can use it with the, uh, the that plastic mallet there. You can tap on it, and wiggle it, and tap it. There you go. That's probably a little more. That's probably it right there. All right. We got the starter chain started around the gear. We put this gear in. And then we're gonna slide this down this starter spline. We got it all back together and we have the gear on. We're holding it in place with a rubber band. So on the other side of the motor. Reassemble the, the shift um, shift detent. It's on the stud here and it's got two rollers and also the neutral detent. So uh, first step is going to be a washer, hardened washer there. And then we have our, our shift detent spring has that notch there and then this spring is going to butt up against the uh, the housing here. And we're going to try to get this in here the best we can. Keep trying to keep it together. And hopefully, but on the whole assembly going. I took it back there. I'll have to get the light and take a look to see if we're. In position. Okay, so we got the inner end. We had to kind of tap on a little bit with the, the hammer. We have the, this the neutral detent right here. And the roller faces inwards. And I actually want to point this out. You can see on, on this little spacer here, it's got a lip. Because this guy's going to end up fitting on here like that. But we got to fight against the spring to make sure everything is in place correctly. So. times because the spring you know I'm gonna have to push on the spring a little bit more the other one get some more clearance there we go push the spring for the back on the, the case there cool that'll work better uh, and like that Hold that. The washer on here. And we have a retaining nut. Right, like that. Find some three bone. Yeah. To our seal.
And the last thing would be to take the oil and put a drop of oil on the, uh, just inside the uh, seal there. Go, go ahead and just pump some oil in there. It'll be okay. Perfect. There you go. Just like that. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and turn the motor around and we'll start installing the uh, shift shaft. Okay, we're going to install the shift shaft here. And we have the, uh, uh, basically it's the shift lever return spring. And if we look kind of closely here, we can see that there's a little detent here where the spring fits up against. So if the spring isn't fitting up against the detent like that, it's reversed. you got to pull it off and flip it over. And then once it's on there, we have to kind of center the spring on the shaft a little bit here. So that spring is going to go on here, and this is the stop for a detent. I'm just going to take a little bit of oil. I'll put it in here, since we're going to be sliding that through. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil on the shaft itself. Put the shift lever on this, but hits the uh, the shift detent here. That little hook grabs the pins and causes the, the whole thing to rotate. But and that's the, the shift shaft there. That's it. Okay, we're going to assemble the uh, the clutch basket, oil pump. All this stuff is very sequential, uh, important with how it goes in. Just need a little bit of oil on the shafts here, the bearings starting to come together here. Okay, first thing that's unique to the 450 is this uh, shim, brass shim guy. I'm going to put some oil on him. Put the goes on. Just like that. Uh, our drive gear, drive gear needs to go on first. And I'm actually using the, the wear pattern in the old way to get my orientation right. You can see this one has that the shape of what used to be the uh, what is the oil filter rotor here? You can see that those marks kind of line up with each other, whereas that one has a round mark. It's line up with there. Put him on. More oil on this. That should go on like that. And now comes our, our clutch basket. And we have to actually put the clutch basket and the oil pump on at the same time. Uh, we got our, our piston for the oil pump and the pin. That pin wants to come out, so make sure it's in place. And we have to we're actually going to install this and then slide it on. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the oil pump. You want to point out the seal? Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah, I'll do it. And then right here, there is an, an O-ring that goes right there that seals the oil pump to the block. And then we have our, our two bolts that holds the oil pump to the block. A little bit of oil on that. I'll put a little bit of oil on, on, on the piston here. It goes in. I'm also going to put some oil on this bearing here on the main shaft. Piston in the oil pump. That's. There it goes. Slides on, the teeth line up, and the oil pump is in place. And I can go ahead and get my my bolts in place. I'll tighten them down, I'll bend the, the lock tabs. Lock tabs down here in a minute. Bend the lock tabs back into place. There. I need to get down the wires first. All right, I'll get that last one for a second. Alright. Can get 
ready to splash together. I'm just going to pull up the splines here. Same thing here. Just a little bit of oil on the splines. Clutch basket. Just like that. And then we have a new, new snap ring that's going to go in place and pull all those pieces there. Do this. Too much. Don't bring around. in the groove there. Alright. Snap ring is in place. Let me just rotate it a little bit. Yeah. Snap ring is on there. Cool. We'll go ahead and start stacking the, uh, the plus disc on and get them ready. So we have friction discs and normal discs. <laughs> Those would be the, we, I call them the steels. Steel discs. Okay. Yeah. And the first one is got a beveled edge on it. Let's see if we can, can rotate that so we can see the bevel a little bit more. Yeah, from the side. Go ahead and flip it around to the back side of it. No, it's on, the the back, the, on the back side. So you can see that it's machined differently. Oh. See how it has this like machined kind of taper on it. It's kind of it's got an angle taper on it. So the angle taper goes in towards the engine. And just simply slides down this uh, spline. Mm -hmm. so that's okay. it. And then we've gone ahead and started soaking our, our clutch disc. So basically, we've got one soaking, we're going to pull it out and put it in wet. And then we'll put another steel on, and then we'll do the same thing and repeat the process over and over again. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and throw, a, throw that one on there. Okay. And then Put a steel on, and the steels, these other steels don't matter which way they go on, they just slide in place. And we'll throw another disc in there and, and let it soak for a little few minutes. Assemble the clutch uh, push rod, and you got a, a half round rounded end here, and then we also have like a dimpled end on here. The dimpled end is what goes to the lifter, and the rounded end is what goes into this part of the engine. And this is part of our lifter plate, I guess piston, I don't know what you call it, I mean, it's lack of a better term. Uh, it's all going to go into the center of the shaft here, and I put some oil on it. Right there. Just goes in the center of the motor. This looks coming out the other side over here. You can see the camera. Here's our clutch push rod right there. That's where it comes out. Alright, that goes in. That guy can go. Go in. Orientation looks good. All right, now we can put our uh, it's our pressure plate on there. We'll put some oil on that surface there, because that's where it touches the uh, the disc, last friction disc. Just 
line them up on the bolt holes. Just like that. We got brand new clutch springs. Four. And then our uh, clutch spring bolts. I'm just gonna start get. I'm gonna get them started here, and we'll get them tightened up in a, a crisscross pattern. But like that. just get it all together here in a second, and then. Get it torqued on the All right, the uh, last thing we're going to install on the side of the motor is going to be the oil filter or the oil rotor. I know if you ask about the rotor, and that's, that's what it is, it's just an aluminum cup. Uh, I want you to note there are some grooves in it. This one happens to be a two groove. There's some other versions that have four grooves in them, and those grooves correlate to a little index mark that's cast on the outside of them, uh, just in case you don't know where, where they are. So, uh, my guy just slides on the there. A hard washer, it actually says outside on it, and that's the part that faces out. Put him in. We have our, this is our, our lock washer, and I've gone ahead and bent some of the tabs up a little bit. You can see where they're not totally flat, so we can actually get a pick behind them to the bend them in place once we torque the nut. And then this little notch here is going to line up with one of the notches um, that I just pointed out a second ago. Just like that. Cool. We have what I call the funky special nut. you got a flat side and a tapered side. The tapered side goes down. And that's what fits in to this tool here. Just like that. We will ask what that tool is supposed to be. That's, that's how that fits. that started. Make the torque wrench and we'll, we'll torque that in place. Okay, we're about we're about to torque this in place. If you can note, there's a little cheap washer in here that's acting as a gear jammer. Um, that would work, or I like to use a penny because it's really soft and it keeps the engine from turning as we're going to torque. All right, we're torquing to what, 30, Six. 36 foot pounds? All right. There it is. Okay. The nut torques into place, and we're gonna get in there and try to bend the tab washer down. I'm gonna try to tilt the motor a little bit so we can see it just a little bit better. It's gonna be tough to see with the camera. I want to line up with one of those tabs, and we're going to bend the tab down so we can lock the nut into place. All right. I'm going to put a seal around the cap. Line up with the prong so it goes into the groove. Like so. So it should be underneath the groove where we can put a snap in there. Right here. Probably need to use the uh, bigger one. Well, no, use the, uh, the other side of the pliers there. The one that as you squeeze them there, uh -huh. they get smaller. So that wraps up this, this side of the motor here. Okay, so one of the, the steps that's often overlooked in, in rebuilding an engine is checking the ring end gap, and that's gonna be this gap here. 
but it's going to be when the ring is in the cylinder and it gets close, right? And there's a, a minimum and maximum threshold for that. Uh, this is kind of an old school technique. You don't see it done too much anymore, but it's always good to check because you never know. Our values for the, the 450 are going to be you know, as tight as 13 thousandths, as loose as 31 thousandths on the top ring, and the second ring is about the same, 12 to 31. Um, we're running identical um, second uh, top and second rings in this engine, uh, these iron replacements. Also, you notice that this ring is marked top. Uh, rings will always be indicating which direction they're supposed to face. It'll say top or T, or I'll have sometimes a little dot or a nick in it to show which way it goes. So here's how the process is done. You take the ring and drop it in the cylinder like this. Kind of get the ring to close, and then I'm going to let it rotate, kind of bring it about, about level. Then I'm going to use a piston here as, my, uh, as a tool to press it in place and see where the gap is there. I'm going to line it up with one of these skirts with the piston. Drop the piston in and press down. And I've kind of chosen an arbitrary spot. I'm using like the this little casting mark on the side of the piston here is kind of my reference because I want to measure the same the rings at the same spot in the cylinder every time. So I've pressed the ring down, I'm just rotate the piston a little bit to make sure the ring is level. Uh, the whole point of this is to make sure the ring is, is as square in the cylinder as we can make it to get an accurate measurement. Okay, so here's our gap. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with my uh, 13 thousandths, that's my, my tightest value, and uh, just take the feeler gauge, get it in there at the gap. Maybe I'm gonna tilt a little bit. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip the cylinder around like that, so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna come in here with the feeler gauge, into the gap, I'm gonna drop it into the gap, and I'm gonna pull. I'm getting a little bit of drag on here, um, nothing that's crazy, but it's a little bit snug, so that's probably a, a tight 13, and it's probably going to be close enough for what we need. But if I was measuring a little bit tighter than that, uh, 10, 9, something like that, I had a hard time getting the gauge, and I would be filing the rings down. So that's kind of a quick test. You should always test the end gap on your ring. So that one's probably going to be good to go. And uh, rotate it out gently, take the ring out. Okay, so we're getting this uh, cylinder base gasket prepped on the cylinder. I'm using this, this old school gasket here called Gasket Cinch. It's kind of like rubber cement. And I just take it and I just kind of paint it on the, the gasket here. All this is going to do is, is basically glue the gasket to the surface here so it doesn't move around. It also provides a little bit of sealing if there's any irregularities in the surface. It's really thin stuff. Um, I've been using it for a long time. A lot of the Harley guys like to use it. Um, again, old school. Kind of sealer works really well. And we're going to also put a very light coat on on the cylinder here as well. And so it, it's like I said, it's thin like rubber cement, and so if it kind of globs up. You can just take your fingers and um, pull off the difference. Again, this is not this is not silicone. This is like it's like. Vulcanizing rubber. And this this batch I can tell is getting a little bit old. It's a little bit globby. Uh, when it's fresh, it's really thin. But uh, this will work. Again, any irregularities, it tacks up quick, especially in the heat here. And it goes on thin and uh, it doesn't break off in the big boogers inside the engine in case you, you overdo it. And it's easy to take off a little bit of acetone and just cleans right up. Alright. We also install the rings. Yeah, we also installed those earrings. I got some footage of you uh, oh, okay. pressing press them in, yeah. And uh, we tested that. We found out the dark side uh, happened to fit well in the gasket. And we're just going to go down. Uh, you can always install gaskets dry. Uh, people, people do that a lot. I mean, that's how the engine was built. And some people like to install gaskets dry. At that point, it's just kind of engine builder's, engine builder's preference. Just like that. All the way around. And you can see those big blobs kind of like flashed off into nothing real quick. You can see how it just kind of rolls off with your thumb, like any extra. It just comes right off. So we'll you see it. Just like rubber cement, it just comes right off. So that's why I like to use it. It'll, it'll keep it stuck in place so it doesn't move. 
I'm actually learning to use this stuff when I was doing car engines, um, like the Chevrolet old. Anybody who's done a Chevy 350 intake manifold, they know they, <laughs> they want to drop into the, the oil pan valley, and this stuff uh, keeps them in place. So. We'll let that dry for a few minutes. We'll come back to it and take off the tack and keep going. All right. Uh, we're going to install the cam chain roller. Somebody just goes in here, and then it fits in here with this keyed index. So first, I'm going to apply some oil to it. Put this on just to move it around. Make sure when you do this that you put the cam on or cam chain on the opposite side. Just inserting it. I'm going to go about halfway. Here, I'll go ahead and hold that side of the chain there, yep. so we can kind of see the roller dropping in. All right, perfect. Try not to drop it. There we go. And then I rotate. I wish I had bigger fingers. Did you get it all the way in? Nope. Not yet. All right, you just screwdriver and press on a little bit. I'm all bound up. Tap it in a little bit more, but we can do that off camera.